Hi. In this video, we are going to go through a couple additional things about vectors that we didn't have time to go over in lecture. So um, please remember how we defined uh, vectors for the purposes of this uh, physics class. So depending on the math class you have taken, you may have seen vectors already. But in a physics class, this is how we define vectors. Suppose that you have vector A. and vector b. Definition of the cross product a cross b is a two-step process. In the first part of the definition we define the direction. So the direction is defined this way. So you see that the vectors a and b are in the plane of the screen. So what we do is we use those two vectors a and b to define the plane that they are in, plane of the screen. And we define the direction of the cross product to be perpendicular to that plane. Now, when you do it that way, you are going to have two possible directions. So at this point, we just have to come up with a rule to pick one of those two directions in a consistent way. And that is the right hand rule that I'm illustrating with my right hand. So you take your entire hand, put it in the direction of the first vector, and orient it in such a way so that you can bend it in the direction of the second vector. So when you do it uh, for A cross B shown in your screen, you see the direction of the thumb points into the screen. So the result of the A cross B here, it points into the screen. And we indicate that with this symbol, a uh, circle with the X inside. So that's the one part of the two part definition. The second part of the definition is the magnitude. So we say that the magnitude of A cross B is given by this expression that you have seen a few times already. Magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of the angle between them. So this is the same expression you saw for torque. And that's because we define torque using this cross product. Torque is defined um, now as a full vector quantity, as the displacement vector cross product with the force. That's how torque is defined. So you have seen this in lecture. Now what I want to do in this problem is to reconcile this physics definition with the definition that you may have seen in your math class. So what's written out here is the definition that you have seen in math class. And um, showing their agreement between them, it's tedious work, but it's a doable work. So let me start out with um, some coordinate description here. So when we look at the coordinate axis, let's say we have x-axis going to right and y-axis going up, then so this is called right-handed coordinate, and it's because, well, the coordinate axes are given by right-hand rule. So this is what I mean. So you have x and y, so you apply the right-hand rule to x and y, x uh, cross y, and x cross y gives you z. That's the right-handed coordinate. So in this case, z uh, comes out of the screen. So let me draw that. Z is the vector that comes out of the screen. You can think of this as the unit vectors, x hat, y hat, and z hat. Um, if g went the other way, if g went into the screen, then that would be the left-handed coordinate system, but we don't use that. That's why we came up with the right-hand rule so that uh, everyone uses the same convention. So this is something useful to know. Um, in fact, let me write down the result of the cross product between all these three, x hat, y hat, and z hat. So when you do cross product of these uh, three unit vectors, there's only nine possible combinations. Let me write them all out. So I have um, x hat cross x hat, and we went over in class that this is zero. And you can see that because the sine theta, theta is zero. All right, 
um, a more to go x hat cross y hat oh that's how we define the coordinate axis that's better be g hat um, for x hat cross g hat please do the cross product for yourself um, x hat cross x hat cross g hat um, points downward so minus y hat minus y hat all right so that's the ones starting with the x hat let's do the y hat y hat cross x hat let's see y hat cross x hat g hat uh, goes into the board instead of coming out so that's equal to minus g hat y hat cross y hat is once again zero because the angle between them is zero uh, y hat cross g hat i encourage you to do this on your own and you should get y hat cross g hat x hat all right, let's keep going. Uh, G hat cross X hat. Um, I'm going to tell you some a rule that actually tells me um, the answer quickly. Uh, it's the cyclic permutation. So when you start out with the X, uh, then Y is the next in order, and G hat. This, this is the cyclic permutation that gives you a positive number. This is the anti-cyclic permutation to go from X to G. You went the other way, and then keep going the other way, you get y, but it'll be minus y hat. In fact, if you check the pattern here, you will see that it all fits. So using that pattern that we saw, I know that g hat cross x hat is equal to plus y hat. And you can do the right hand rule for yourself and double check it. And g hat cross y hat, that's anti-cyclic permutation, so this will be minus x hat. And g hat cross g hat is once again um, zero and all these are useful to note that um, when a unit factor crosses with itself you get zero so uh, whenever you see a vector crosses with itself we don't have to think it through we can just say okay that's zero all right, so the question was to show that all these components are as written there. And the way to do it is to write it all out. Go through the algebra. As I said, it's tedious, but it's doable. So let me write it out. So this is what I'm going to compute. A cross B is equal to all right, so that's what I'm going to write out. So when I finish the calculation and look at the x, y, and z component, I'll get what's labeled up there. So to do this calculation, we write this out in terms of components. So a vector becomes this, ax, x hat plus ay, y hat plus ag, um, g hat. All right, that's the full um, description of the a vector in terms of its component. Cross product to it. Cross product to it, the vector b. So that would be bx, x hat, plus the y component in the y direction, plus the g component in the g direction. All right, so we are going to expand this all out. And it's three terms multiplied to three terms. So there's gonna be a lot of terms. I'll just have to um, go through it to make sure that I don't forget any. All right, let me start out with the um, ax. So I'm going to write down all the terms that multiplies to the ax here. So that's going to be ax times bx but you know what it's gonna give me x hat cross x hat so i know that's gonna be zero so i won't write that down so what i have um, first is ax times by so it'll be ax times by scalars just to multiply and x hat cross y hat 
gives me, uh, let's see, I'm looking at the table I worked out here, G hat. So I'm going to write down G hat. All right, that's uh, AX and X and Y components so far. I need the G component. Um, X cross G is minus Y hat. So I get minus the component AX, BG, Y hat. All right, that's the first of the three terms. Let me change the color and work out all right, that's the first of the three terms. Let me change the color and work out the AY terms. So AY cross um, BX. So that's going to give me non-zero value. So uh, Y hat cross X hat, I get minus G hat. So it's going to be minus AY BX. The components don't change. And the result of uh, doing the cross product with the unit factor is g hat or minus g hat. I wrote the minus ahead of time. All right, um, a y cross b y gives me zero again. Um, so I'm not gonna write that down. A y cross b z uh, will give me plus x hat uh, y z x hat. So plus a y b z uh, x hat. All right. Change the color one more time and finish up the AG terms. So AG cross um, BX, that's going to give me plus a Y hat, um, as I see in the work table that we worked out. So the component AG times BX times the direction, GX, G hat cross X hat is Y hat. All right, one more. So AG cross BY, AG cross BY is equal to, um, so G hat cross Y hat is minus X hat, so it's going to be minus AG BY X hat. All right, so that's all the, um, all non-zero, one, two, three, four, five, six terms. And what we now have to do is we have to collect the like terms. So let me collect them this way. I'm going to collect all the terms that have X head in it. This will give me the X component. Then I'm going to collect all the terms that have Y head in it. That'll give me all the Y component. Then I'm going to collect all the terms that have G head in it. That'll give me all the uh, G component terms. So once again, this is tedious, but not difficult algebra. So all the things that have X head in it. So I see X head here and X head here. So it'll be AYBG minus AGBY. Let me write that out. So A Y B G minus A G B Y. So this is the X component of the A cross B. And you see that that is exactly what we wanted to hear. And so this is the how we define cross product in a math class. And what we are showing here is that having defined the cross product the way we do in physics class, you can actually get to the mathematics description or definition of cross product. So I consider this to be more fundamental because it's easier to start from. All right, let's continue. So I collect all the y hat terms here. So I have y hat term here, y hat term here. So writing that all in. So let me write down the positive one first. So a z b x minus a x b g plus the g hat terms here's one and here's the second one so let me write that in a x b y minus a y b x that's it uh, our work is done 
So you compare the x component with the x component here, y component here with the y component here, g component here with the g component here. And they agree. So this is the uh, showing of that um, this uh, physics definition of cross product is consistent with the math definition of cross product. Um, the, once again, the big difference is that the physics definition, we covered this in lecture, that physics definition does not depend on a coordinate system. But the math description does because you are still, you are talking about components. All right, let me do part B uh, on the same screen. Part B is kind of a fun thing, so let me show you. All right, so this is, I guess, for people who have taken linear algebra because that's where you cover matrices. So if you haven't heard of matrices yet and you don't know what a determinant is, then um, you can skip this portion. This is not required. It's just, this is just a compact way of memorizing the, the component uh, description of cross product and also being able to figure out some of the properties um, easily as a consequence of this being true. So this is what we are trying to show, that, um, that A cross B, um, you can build this uh, three by three matrix, and that will somehow give you the um, answer to what A cross B is. So let me show you what this uh, matrix looks like. So it's a three column matrix, where each of the columns are um, some aspect of this cross product. So the very first column is the unit vectors, x hat, y hat, and z hat. The second column is the first vector, in our case, a. ax, ay, and az. The third column is the b vector or the second vector, bx, by, and bz. Um, you can also look at this column-wise. So the first column is the x, um, x component. It, the order is important. The unit vector, first of the two, two cross product vectors, and the second of the two cross product vectors. Then the y component, and then the z component. And um, this is the shortcut that you should have learned in your linear algebra class. That when you take the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix, this is the shortcut way to memorize this. It only works for 3x3 three three matrices. It does not, well, it is unnecessary for 2x2 two two matrices. It does not work for 4x4 four four matrices. So it's a, a strange shortcut that only works for uh, three by three matrices. So let me just uh, go through that briefly. So when you try to calculate the determinant, the trick is this, you copy over two of the columns here so that you can do the next procedure I'm going to describe. Let me copy them over here. X hat, AX, BX, y hat, a y, b y. All right, once you have done that, this is the procedure. Um, you take all the, um, all the combinations that I'm highlighting in green, x, a y, b z. You imagine doing a multiplication between them, a x hat times a y times b z. So do that for uh, y, a, z, b, x, g, a, x, b, y. All these three products get positive signs. You are going to be adding them up. And here are the products that will get a negative sign. So that's the um, products that are going diagonally down to the left. So those are the products that are going diagonally down to the left. So G hat A, Y, B, X, X hat A, Z, B, Y, Y hat A, X, B, Z. All these get negative sign associated uh, with their product. So um, uh, here's the quick way to check. 
So I want to check what is my x component that is a cross b x component and I want to check what is my a cross b y component a cross b z component and I want to compare um, if the expression I'm getting is equal to what I'm already expecting it to be. So the quickest way to do this is to um, collect the like terms as you're writing this down. So the thing that's multiplying to x at here, it'll be my x component. So po positive or plus a y b z. And let's see, here's the another term that contains x at. So minus a z b y. So the x component here will be a y b z minus a z b y and if you are checking your results as you go this is exactly what the x component was supposed to be and you can do the same thing for y uh, staring at i get plus a z b x and then minus a x B, G. These are the two terms there. G term, um, so it will be plus AX BY minus the AY BX. So when you look at these terms that I have written down here, you should recognize that oh, those are all the components that have been written. So, um, so this is part B. Uh, this is a, a compact way of memorizing what uh, the components of cross product looks like. So, um, so I probably won't be asking you any exam questions that's related to exact to this thing. But um, now is a good time to get some exposure to this because as you move on to more upper division level courses, for the purpose of carrying out calculations, you'll have to write out these components and. Um, once you memorize it the right way, then um, it's much harder to forget it. Alright, so I have a few more videos to make, so until then, bye.